are going to now make bakeable whipple cream. We're going to use a lightweight oven bake clay and tear it into little pieces that are about nickel size. I've seen this made with just this clay and water all mixed together in a Ziploc baggie. Okay, and I have also seen this made with glue, water, and the cream. And I have also seen this made with Mod Podge instead of Elmer's glue, water, and Whipple cream. I know from a chemical stand, uh, standpoint that you're probably gonna get stronger Whipple cream putting any kind of glue binder in it. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm thinking, of course, if you were in a bind, you could just use the water, but I'm thinking if you're watching this tutorial, then um, you probably have a lot of things to make polymer clay with and it all adds up and it gets quite expensive. And I know you've got some Mod Podge or glue hanging around. Okay, let's do this. The first thing that we're going to try is the do-it-yourself bakeable whipple cream. And if you remember, we mixed a little water with little teeny tiny pieces of the whipple cream and some Elmer's glue together. I put too much water in it. I dumped the water out. Um, I've seen this whipple cream done where it's almost like, kind of like air dry clay, which is, you know, thick and very puffy. Um, but a little um, thinner than that. This is very thin. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work very well to uh, make the real contours of the frosting from the piping tip. But we will find out. Um, if it can't do it, we'll just wipe it off and start over. I'm going to time lapse this. I have my little strawberries and they're strawberries and bananas. Cane, I purchased them from per Purple Fish Art on Etsy, and this is an extremely socially responsible shop. Um, if you don't want to spend the time to make cane for your minis, I highly recommend them, Purple Fish Art. Here we go. Okay, so the DIY Bakeable Whipple Cream is in the oven. It came out really well, and I do know now that if I don't add so much water, I can get a really clean texture of the frosting from the piping tip. I was really happy with what came out. It looks very realistic, and I will use this again. This might be my new frosting. We will see how strong it is compared to what we are going to make now, which is your traditional liquid Sculpey frosting. So in my stackers, I have some different frostings that I have made um, just because I feel like it. I'm not gonna make white, even though I have white frosting I can revive. I am going to make pink because I have this little pink clay. We're gonna make little uh, pink strawberry layer cake instead. Um, I have a frosting tutorial that I will put the link down in the description to. And we are going to revive this frosting now and make um, another strawberry layer cake. Um, and instead of piping out the frosting, I'm just gonna use this little mold. This is how to do it really, really easily. But I do have um, another video of an Easter egg. It's like a chocolate Easter egg. And I used the 16 inch, uh, excuse me, 16 gauge Wilton um, frosting tip in that video as well. And I'll post that in the description. Here we go. Okay, so that liquid Sculpey mixed up really fast. Don't be surprised if it takes you 10 minutes or more to, revol to revive old liquid um, like frosting this is only two weeks old so that's why it mixed up so fast um, and we are going to spread it on now my hope is that the bakeable uh, clay that we just made our own whipple cream works as well as mixing liquid sculpey into your clay to make frosting 
liquid Sculpey is expensive. And if you make a lot of cakes and pastries, etc., you go through it really fast. So we're gonna hopefully, um, when we do our little test here, see if the liquid Sculpey is as strong as our DIY bakeable whipping cream. Okay, let's go. So that went super well. And look how easy it is to just use a mold. It's worth the money. I use it all the time. You can easily also use your cake tip, but it is messier. So we're gonna pop this in the oven. And next we're going to try our two non-bakeable clays. Well, one's not a clay, one is silicone. This is a non-bakeable whipple cream. And if you bought non-bakeable lightweight clay in the craft store and mixed it with a little water and glue, just like we did with the bakeable whipple cream, you'll get this, okay? So it's the same thing. Um, and the next one that we're going to do is a white silicone. So we'll see how well that adheres to clay to make frosting. Next, we are going to try silicone. There's a few disclaimers that I want to go over with silicone. Sometimes it stinks. You might wanna work outside or in a room that's well ventilated. And there are a couple different kinds. Now, I made this necklace, which adhered beautifully without any bonding agent to metal. I used white silicone one and a large piping tip, okay? I'm sure that this would work just fine to bond with polymer clay. However, oh, and by the way, here it is, okay? So it says, here's a clear version of it. You can get it where it says white. It says silicone one, and it takes about a day to cure, okay? So when you do use silicone and you mix it with a paint or color, it will start seizing up on you fast. So you have to work really fast with it. Um, and I've learned this from watching the Decoden or Decoden phone cases. I'm not sure how to say it. This is silicone one. This is what you want. Get it in white. Now, some people do get it in clear because they want a little more translucent effect and they add the, um, the paint to it as well. Um, for our purpose today, I am not gonna use the silicone piping bag. I got it on Amazon. They are excellent, but I'm just using such a little amount today. We're not going to use it. It would have worked out so well with this because you can reuse this piping bag. Literally, when you are done with it, after piping your silicone and you know putting it all in there, the silicone, after it dries, actually just pulls away from this bag. So I got it to make many more of these and to not have to keep buying piping bags. Okay, so there's your first lesson. Use silicone one. You can use clear and add paint to it for a more translucent feel, or you can use white and you can add paint to it as well. The paint will make it seize up. The paint works as a binder and you will have to work best. Today, I am using silicone two. I do not know if this will work. It comes in white and it also comes in clear. I believe the difference is that it says it's 30 minute water ready, shrink and crack proof, low odor. Okay. Well, I'm going to just squeeze this right into a piping, um, my little piping Wilton um, deal here, and we're gonna see how it works. First, I'm gonna clean this off, and I'll do it on a rapid time-lapse setting so you see how I clean my uh, cake tips. Um, I will also be using nail polish remover to clean. I think this is an important part of the tutorial because you want to reuse your cake tips, right? Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're 
going to use the dreaded silicone two. Silicone one is what I prefer to use, but and it works. So I would um, suggest that you do this with silicone one white. And I don't know how fast this is gonna dry. See, I just go like this. So I'm gonna do this first. Okay, let's see how silicone two works. I just tried it, a bunch of clear stuff came out of the white. So you need to prime it a little bit. I don't know if you can see this here. I don't know, but a little weak uh, stuff came out. It doesn't come out white. You have to squeeze it a little bit. So I'm gonna do this fast, because I don't know really how long it takes to dry. Oh, it's come, coming out nice in the piping tip, right? Woo, that's cool. I'm gonna spread this. Um, and then let's just do the top. Oh, that's kind of pretty, right? Give it two little dollops. Okay, why not? Now, I really like how it came with the screw-on cap. It stinks. You know, I've just put on a tiny bit and it stinks. Um, I think one of the first things I'm gonna do though before I work with this is I don't know if it's going to um, solidify here in my uh, Wilton 16 inch cake frosting tip. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work fast, right, and clean that puppy out. I don't know if it comes out just like the, I mean, you're really working with two very different things when you work with silicone one, which I love, and this is silicone two, which I don't know how this is gonna work, you know? So let's just take our second here to clean out this. See, you can see a tiny bit of that clear that came out. Okay, I'm gonna smooth it around, smooth it all around with the tongue depressor. So far I like it. Right, so far so good. It's messy. It's frosting. Okay, wipe off my glove. I like the consistency so far. Real easy to work with. Um, dryer we're gonna pop one in here and one in there yeah these strawberries worked out really well and they saved me a lot of time buying them they were really inexpensive I believe that they are for nail art okay and now let's pop these all around the outside I'm gonna time lapse this Okay, I just took a little time to clean up. Next, we're gonna try our Whipple Cream Air Dry Clay. This is cream clay, it's from Clay House. So, let's see. I'm gonna use pink instead of white. And um, we're gonna see how that turns out. So it looks like it comes in a little bag. Okay, I'll put it back in that nice little bag when I'm done. And um, I'm not going to put it in a clay piping bag because we're just using, as you know, such a little amount. Now we're testing for durability and strength, right? If you were to make this on your own, right, and it would come out pretty close to this, you want to make sure that it's strong enough to use because I make charms for jewelry. So I like the idea of a non-bakeable air dry clay because I mean ease of use it's so easy but tomorrow when everything dries we're gonna see if uh, the pieces break off or whatnot we can always repair them easily with um, with resin or glue if they do but um, so we won't have to throw away our beautiful creations but let's see if this works if it does work oh my gosh that would be great for me to make my own DIY uh, non-bakeable air dry clay. Okay, so we're gonna do this just like we did. 
with all the other ones. Here I'm putting it, oh, here it comes. Okay, and I'm gonna do this on a time lapse. So that came out so beautifully out of this piping tip, right? It's like so nice. But I can tell you right now, this is never going to adhere to this. It's just like coming off. There's nothing setting it on there. So uh, that's for the, the frosting on the top. I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue. I can tell you right now that it's gonna need a little bit of help. So we're gonna add some of my favorite Gorilla Glue Gel. That should keep it on. How pretty is that? Wow, this stuff really gives you, it's kind of hard to work with, it's hard to pipe out a little bit, but it gives you the grooves, right? It's pretty groovy. Um, because I can open the top, I can put this back in. We're pretty much done with that. I'm going to spread this on. Who knows, we might need that little piece. Okay. And I'm going to time lapse this. Hi, it's amazing Amanda here, and it is time for the overview of what we had created um, with different frosting and different materials. So I'm going to start off with this little guy. Okay, and this was the air dry cream frosting. Now, if you remember, you make this the same way that we made our DIY bakeable whipple cream, um, you know, with a little glue and a little water and you mix it all together slowly. Um, but I love the way it came out. I love how it was not a pain in the butt to work with. It was not so ooey gooey, terrible to work with, but it does not adhere well. Like I used a little bit of Gorilla Glue Gel to adhere the frosting on top, to adhere this layer, and then I pulled this layer off easily. So if you're gonna make these for jewelry, you do not wanna disappoint someone by like a layer falling off. Um, don't think of this as an adhesive. You need to use Gorilla, like a little dollop of Gorilla Glue Gel. Um, I believe it will be, I believe it'll be strong enough for light wear jewelry, but if someone was wearing this heavy wear jewelry, I would add a UV resin coating. It is not strong. It looks great. It looks great coming out of um, the piping, um, my little piping icing tip, but the stuff is not strong. It's um, for wearing jewelry. I wouldn't trust it. I would put resin over it. I would also glue all the pieces on. That was this, cream clay cream clay, but you can make your own air dry whipple cream. Okay, cool. Our second one, I was very happy with. This was my DIY bakeable whipple cream. And how did we make that? Well, I got this stuff that's called lightweight, lightweight oven bake clay. I just used a tiny bit. Remember, we just took it into little tiny bits, put it in our cup, mixed it with a little glue and a little water. It was a little thin coming out on the piping nozzle. It really, um, you can't see many grooves of where it came out of the Wilton tip. You can see a little, it actually looks very realistic in this application because this is a lot of, um, it's supposed to be like whipped cream on the strawberry layer cake. But I think this might be my new favorite and it might replace me using so much of my awesome Sculpey TLS um, to make frosting with. So I really like this. I'm gonna use it again and try and get it into a thicker consistency and try and get these beautiful little more of a piping tip little grooves on the um, top of a cupcake, etc. So that was super cool. I really like this lightweight oven baked clay to make your own whipple cream. Um, next, we have the silicone caulk. So if you remember from the tutorial, we talked about two different kinds. These are both white. This is a silicone caulk one. This is silicone, silicone caulk two. Um, it says silicone one right up here. And I used white, not clear. With silicone one, I made this. 
and it adhered beautifully right on to a metal base. So I have no problem using silicone one as a um, as a frosting for um, any kind of my polymer clay. It sticks well and it adheres well. Silicone two dried a lot faster. Silicone one took a day to dry. Silicone two was dry within a half an hour. And look, it, it came out cool, there are grooves, but the downside is these guys are really messy. And I had to use gloves working with this. I had to clean out my piping tip really fast because I was afraid that it would um, dry in my piping, my frosting uh, wilt and piping tip. Um, but yeah, it adhered the clay really well together. Really cool. And lastly, we have our beloved TLS or Sculpey Liquid right? Just regular frosting. And we all know it works great. Um, I made the top from a mold. Um, you can make your own though. You don't have to use a mold to make the frosting like this. You can use a Wilton tip and everything, but I just find a mold works. Um, it's very easy. So very reliable, strong, durable, awesome, perfect uh, Sculpey TLS or that. Sculpey right? Liquid Sculpey. Awesome. Expensive, but you can revive frosting that um, we did revive the frosting here um, that I had made this pink frosting. We revived it. So I'm going to say this experiment, these four little guys, these were the two, oh, excuse me, bakeable, bakeable, these two. This was the DIY bakeable whipple cream. This is regular, just Sculpey. And this was the air dry, regular whipple cream. This is the silicone. I'm gonna say it was a very successful experiment. Um, you can use all of these. The one, the one that I would really just be careful with is an air dry whipple cream, whether you do it yourself or you use the cream clay. Okay, it is just not as strong as the silicone or the bakeable whipple cream or the regular Sculpey liquid TLS. Um, it's just not as strong. It isn't. I had to put Gorilla Glue in between all the layers. Is it strong enough for dollhouse food? Absolutely, but not for everyday wear. So to make sure that this guy doesn't fall apart on customers, I will, um, this, this last little, you see I put um, Gorilla Glue here, Gorilla Glue in this layer, and Gorilla Glue not yet in this layer. I'm going to take that layer off again, put Gorilla Glue on it. I am going to do some UV resin on it to make it hard and make sure that none of the layers fall apart. And then, yeah, it's totally saleable, but I need to work this. Um, it's fine for dollhouse food though, absolutely fine. But even for dollhouse food, I would use the super glue. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope this YouTube stands the test of time. These are all like birding polymer clay questions that I have and I think it's really great with polymer clay to expand out and see what other kind of mediums that you can use and incorporate within all your delicious or otherwise creations. Um, we do have a Patreon group coming up in April. Uh, it's going to be my amazing Amanda polymer clay miniature lessons and we do live zooms. I show you the tutorials that I learned on to get you making all these beautiful food creations in warp speed. I'll show you how I did it. At this point, I've been making these for one year and I'm very comfortable and confident making a lot of things. And I decided to make a Patreon group to share my skills with the world to help other people create other stuff faster and um, yeah, with the same kind of energy that I did. Have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in. www.amazingamanda.com is my website. And please help me to keep these tutorials coming by clicking the like button and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, you reached the bonus video. Now we really don't need to do anything to these luscious little layer cakes, right? but I wanna make some awesome sauce. I wanna make some strawberry awesome sauce and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna use UV resin 
and I have a UV resin Teresa nail lamp next to me that I got off of Amazon for like, I think it was 30 bucks. I use it all the time. So we are gonna add some awesome strawberry sauce and I'm gonna show you how. I like to use this Limono UV resin and after about four minutes in my Teresa nail lamp, it's done. It's like Instamatic Automatic. I'm gonna put this on a time lapse and enjoy. Mm -hmm. 